Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my birth story video for my third son, Emmett. I did just give birth to Emmett on February 12th and I'm just getting around to film this video now, so sorry that it's a little bit late. I'm hoping that I'm not going to miss anything. I did quickly write down some notes in my notebook of things I wanted to be sure to mention. But if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave those in the comment section below. I'm going to hopefully not have this video be too, too long, so I'm going to jump right in. So for context, this is my third, this was my third labor and delivery. My third son, he was due on February 16th and arrived on February 12th. So to kick things off, on February 11th, which was a Tuesday, I did have my regular 39-week uh, doctor's appointment. It was actually at 39 weeks, two days. And this has been, I was pregnant longer at this point than I had been with my second pregnancy. I was pregnant with Wyatt for 38 weeks and five days. So even though I technically wasn't overdue, I was really feeling like I was every day just dragged on and I was ready to be done. So at this doctor's appointment, I asked for a membrane sweep and I told her to make it a good one. There's no point in going gentle and whoa, that was so incredibly painful. She, she gave me a good membrane sweep, that is for sure. And that was around three, well my appointment was at three o'clock, so the membrane sweep was probably at like 315, 320, because we went through, you know, all the regular stuff before that. After the membrane sweep, I had a few errands to run, and then I was going to head home. I was actually following Jeremy, but I had the kids in my car. He met um, me at the doctor's office from work, and I drove from home with the kids, so we had two vehicles. And I was following Jeremy because we were going like all these different roads because there is a couple of really big accidents on the main road, the main way that we would go home. And I had no idea where we were going. So I was really trying to keep up with my husband who he was driving uh, very efficiently. He wasn't really speeding, but like when there was an opening, he would jump over to the other lane or it was rough, okay? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really pertain to my birth story, but it is key because this is around 4 p.m. and that is when my contractions hit and they hit so hard. So it was under an hour from the time I had my sweep to when my contractions actually started and they were about 10 minutes apart. So I'm trying to drive in on roads that I'm not familiar with, keeping up with my crazy husband with all the kids in the back and having contractions every 10 minutes. It was so brutal, so scary, honestly. Probably shouldn't have been driving, but I had to get, like, I couldn't just leave my vehicle on the side of the road. I do not recommend driving while in labor, that is for sure. So after that, my contractions were ramping up in intensity, but not getting any closer together. So they stayed from 4 p.m. on at 10 minutes apart but they kept getting you know stronger and stronger and I was having really bad back labor that's where I was feeling all of my contractions was in my back which is not how I experienced labor with my other two and I also want to mention that my water broke first with my other two pregnancies so with Max my first my water broke in the like early hours of the morning and then contractions started and with Wyatt my water broke and contractions didn't start so I went in to be induced and so I was kind of like Jeremy kept asking me is it time to go in how are you feeling you're looking like you're in a lot of pain I think we should go in and I kept being like no I am in a lot of pain but they're staying 10 minutes apart and my water hasn't broke so I don't even know if this is like real labor or if my contractions will like subside again because if you had been keeping up with my pregnancy, I have been having contractions. The first time I experienced like real strong contractions was Boxing Day, so December 26th, and I had him February 12th. And they weren't just like light Braxton Hicks, like, oh, I could feel it. Like they were strong contractions that happened on regular intervals, but then eventually just stopped. So I didn't want to like call in the cavalry to watch the other two kids until I knew it was really labor. 
Um, because I just, like, I hate putting other people out, so I didn't want to, like, waste anyone's time, which is silly. Uh, and I definitely should have gone in much earlier than I ended up going in, but anyway. So I was waiting for my water to break, and it just never happened. So at 1.30, like, my husband and the kids all went to bed, and I could not sleep at all because, again, my contractions were really strong and painful and every 10 minutes. And at 1.30 a.m., I finally just couldn't handle the pain anymore. Like, it was getting really bad. So we called in my sister-in-law, and she didn't make it to the house until about 2.30, and then we had to, um, you know, chat and to like fill her in on like the morning bus situation because our oldest is in school and all of that so we didn't leave the house until probably quarter to three to head to the hospital which was half an hour away and it was a snowstorm naturally have a winter baby you live in Canada of course you need to give birth or be in labor during a snowstorm that actually happened with Max as well he's a January baby why do I like having kids in blizzards? I'm not really sure. We won't be doing it again though. <laughs> so I think we made it to the hospital at about 3.15. This is the point where I'm in like starting to like retreat into my own mind um, and not really paying attention to everything that's going on because the pain is getting so intense. Um, I'm sure if you've been in labor and experienced like without an epidural yet especially, the pain, you kind of need to retreat into yourself in order to cope with it because it it got really, really bad. So I think we got to the hospital about 3.15. And like I said, this was the worst back labor I ever experienced. I could hardly walk through it and I had to like walk upstairs from the parking garage and from one side of the hospital to the other. It was rough. Once I got, you know, triaged in and all of that and got, um, checked before they you know they want to make sure you're in real labor before they set you up in a labor and delivery room so at that point my contractions were at four minutes apart and I was six centimeters in the car ride it was longer than it should have been because of the snow but I was kind of aware that my contractions were getting closer together but I didn't realize that they were only four minutes apart until the nurse was she said I need to check you but let me know after your next contraction because I had just had one and then she checked my blood pressure and wanted to wait for another one before she checked me and she was gone for less than four minutes and she's like I thought you said they were between seven and ten minutes apart I do remember that but at this point like I could hardly answer any questions by the time they're like yeah she's in labor and got me into a room I was feeling really nauseous with Max I was vomiting the whole time with Wyatt I didn't um, I didn't actually vomit while in labor, but every contraction I felt so sick to my stomach, but I kept holding it back because I couldn't imagine like the movement of like retching into a vomit bag while having these contractions. That's how bad they were. It was just a whole nother thing. I did ask for an epidural. I've asked for an epidural every single time. There ain't no shame in my pain management game. I believe in modern medicine. With Max, it worked beautifully. I was able to have a nap and had to be woken up to push because they were like, um, the head is like right there. We can almost see it. So I think you need to wake up. And it failed for the second time. I had a failed epidural with Wyatt where it did not, like the epidural worked, but I was too far along. And so I only had like numb calves, up to my calves. So I still felt everything and the same thing happened this time, but I didn't get any numbing this time. He had just gotten it in and laid me on my side. That's when my water did actually break. It still hadn't broken up until this point. And the pain was so intense. He was asking me if I was starting to feel hot, if I felt some tingling in my legs or like heat in my legs and I did but I was still in so much pain like it didn't take the edge off at all nothing and that was because like I was ready to push basically so if you get your epidural too late then it doesn't do anything so once I got up into my hospital room they did call the doctor so this is probably at around 345 
and my doctor had to, you know, get ready and drive in all of that. I was group B strep positive, which means as soon as my water breaks, they have to hook me up to IVs, which I kind of wish that they broke my water because ideally you should be hooked up to an IV for at least an hour, ideally four is what I've heard. And I was hooked up to it for minutes before I gave birth basically. So my water broke and my doctor had pretty much just gotten in the door. She had gotten to sit down and kind of look through my file of what the nurse had written up up into that point. And the next contraction after my water broke, I like was screaming at this point and I said there's a lot of pressure and wasn't so pressure when it's time to push is kind of like feeling like you need to have a bowel movement but this was so much pressure in the bottom of my tailbone I couldn't handle it um so my doctor checked me and his head was like right there so she's gloving up the nurse is calling in for like backup you know extra nurses to come in and help and they didn't even have time to arrive because from that point to giving birth there were three minutes i gave birth in three minutes which is absolutely insane with my first i pushed for 13 minutes with wyatt i pushed for six minutes and with emmett i pushed for three minutes apparently i just want to keep beating my record by approximately 50 percent good thing we're not having a fourth child because i don't think i could push out a baby in a minute and a half I did get a second degree tear and wow, like I said, my epidural did not work. So that was really brutal. Emmett came out facing, like flipped the wrong way. He wasn't breached, but like his head came out facing up instead of down. So he didn't get that like twist in there, which um, helps reduce tearing so because he came head facing up his face was facing up towards the ceiling the top of his head is like the widest circumference came out and that's why I tore so bad because he didn't come out with like the crown of his head if that makes sense and the weirdest thing happened which Jeremy just loves to continue pointing out Jeremy's my husband is his once his head came out he was kind of stuck around his shoulders which again contributed to the tearing but he started crying immediately like he was crying before they called time on his birth and that was really strange like just his head hanging out screaming blue murder that has never happened to me before it was really really strange um once he was delivered and they went to place him on my chest, the cord was really short and that hurt so bad. So when they went to like put him like up on my chest like this, I hadn't delivered the placenta yet, obviously. And it just like pulled on it because the cord was really short. So that really hurt until I was able to deliver the placenta. I had major, major shakes, which is a combination of that's a side effect of having an epidural. And so even though it didn't work, I technically had the drugs in my system. And also like an adrenaline shock because I did like rush through birth so quickly that I've had the major shakes for over an hour. And I actually found it really hard to like hold on to Emmett, which was scaring me a little. And like my legs were shaking, like my whole body was convulsing for almost an hour, over an hour, I mean. Then my uterus was not contracting down after my placenta was delivered. Um, they were kind of like, there's not that much bleeding, what's happening? And when they, you know, they test your belly, they like push on it to see where your uterus is. It was still fully like up to where it was prior to giving birth basically. So when they really pushed on it, I felt like the grossest blood clot ever. This is probably TMI. I'm assuming you're not squeamish if you're listening to a birth story. I'm sorry if this is graphic. It was a huge blood clot. Like I didn't get a look of it, but I felt it and it was large. And then I had to be put on some kind of medication to get my uterus to start contracting down. So my whole body was in shock, adrenaline shock from the fast crazy delivery. And then also my uterus was, my doctor said when you give birth so fast, um, 
your uterus is just kind of like in shock and forgets what it's supposed to do, which is to start contracting and shrinking down immediately after birth. My placenta exploded on my nurse. So they have to like check your placenta, make sure it's healthy, to make sure that you haven't been, you know, drinking or doing drugs or there's no underlying health issues that could show up in your placenta. Um, so they kind of know what to look for with the baby, etc. And as she was, you know, like checking it, it like arterial blood sprayed all over her, which was disgusting, but also kind of funny. And it was everywhere. So gross. Uh, we have at our hospitals here where I live, they have like mandatory one hour skin to skin. I'm sure if you really didn't want to hold your baby, they wouldn't make you, which that sounds really strange to me. But anyway, so we had over an hour of skin to skin. Uh, we breastfed immediately. He latched on perfectly. Um, after that, he was able to get weighed and all of that. And he weighed seven pounds, seven ounces. And at that point, Jeremy, my husband, was able to hold him for the first time and I was able to get up and get showered. And that's pretty much it. We only had to stay in the hospital for one night. Um, I can link up our one week updates. We're coming up to one month updates, which you guys will be seeing here pretty soon. Again, these videos are being filmed and then edited way later. So sorry about that. We'll catch up eventually. But Emmett Murdoch was born on February 12th at 4.45 a.m. It's so crazy to me. I can't believe as I'm filming this tomorrow, he's going to be one month old. And that just is so wild to me. I would love it if you shared maybe some pieces of your birth story with me in the comments. I love like watching these videos and also hearing others' experiences. Uh, this was by far the worst uh, delivery that I had. It was the scariest, the most painful, um, and also like the longest labor, technically. Um, my labor with Max was from water breaking and contraction starting to having him about eight hours. Wyatt, um, I was induced around 2.30 and I had him at 6.30, so that's four hours. Um, and that's like four hours from like the induction first starting when you don't even really feel like you're in labor. That one was really fast. But I was in labor for 12 hours with Emmett and it was the most painful and stressful. <laughs> and I think I tore the worst this time. So crazy what the body can do to bring life into this world. I'm so incredibly grateful to be able to have had three vaginal deliveries and not have had to have any C-sections. Um, I'm just like feeling some like big gratitude for my own body. If that's, that's probably really weird. But I think that's all I have to share with you. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!